Hi everybody, my name is David uh, from Facebook AI Research in London and this presentation will give an overview of a new set of tools which have been implemented for processing volumes in PyTorch 3D. And so in this presentation I will first give an overview of the new implicit surface renderer which has been implemented in PyTorch 3D. I will then describe how we can use the implicit renderer in order to render volumetric grids. So implicit representations recently became very popular since several methods such as neural radiance fields have demonstrated very impressive results. And since PyTorch 3D is currently supporting only rendering of meshes or point clouds, uh, we decided to implement a set of tools for rendering implicit surfaces to also facilitate research in the area of uh, implicit function rendering. And so we will first start with a bunch of formal definitions to set up the stage for the implicit rendering. So an implicit surface is constructed with the help of a function phi, which maps 3D points x to a scalar value. More specifically, uh, the function phi defines the surface as a level set of the function. Or in other words, the surface is a set S of all 3D points x, whose value of the function phi equals a given constant tau. Now there are several types of the implicit function phi, however in this tutorial we will mostly focus on the specific type which is called the occupancy function, which here we denote f. So the occupancy function uh, basically assigns to the 3D points uh, values between 0 and 1, uh, such that if the value is 0, then this denotes a point which is completely transparent. If the value is 1, then this denotes a point which um, is on an object surface. So consider a scene like this with an apple in the middle. Uh, for instance, the point x on the surface of the apple would uh, yield an occupancy function value of 1. In case of a free space point x prime, we would get an occupancy value of uh, 0. Furthermore, we also assume that we uh, have the whole surface colored, which means that there is another function called c which for a given 3D point X uh, produces three tuples of RGB values, which are basically coloring the individual 3D points in the domain. And so for this case on the surface of the apple, uh, this point would probably yield uh, a color value of uh, light red, because this is the corresponding, value, uh, corresponding color of the peel of the skin. Um, okay, so while defining the functions uh, f and c is quite a very simple uh, thing in, uh, with the help of tools such as PyTorch, uh, rendering a color to the image of this underlying uh, surface is actually quite a non-trivial task. And so one of the main functionalities in PyTorch 3D is a renderer of such implicit surfaces. And so to give you an overview of this, uh, I will first describe the main building blocks of a classic implicit function renderer, and then I will show how this is implemented in PyTorch 3D. So given a camera and a 2D image pixel location, the shoot ray, which starts in the center of the camera, goes through the pixel and passes through the scene. Uh, along the ray, we then sample a bunch of uh, 3D points, and uh, in the case of a very basic renderer, these points would be uniformly uh, uniformly spaced along uh, uniform depth intervals. For each of those ray points, we then evaluate the occupancy function, which basically uh, labels every point with its probability whether it covers the surface or not. And then together with that, we also evaluate the coloring function, which assigns colors to the individual ray points. After that, we execute the ray marching step, which basically collapses all these individual occupancy values and the color values into a single color of the pixel of the given ray, which we have emitted from the camera. Now, in case of PyTorch 3D, we would implement the whole process as follows. Uh, so we would instantiate the implicit renderer object uh, by calling uh, the constructor of PyTorch 3D.renderer.implicitRenderer. Now this renderer uh, stores two sub-objects. The first one is the ray sampler which uh, basically takes care of emitting these individual rays from the camera and also deciding which points along the ray are going to be sampled. 
The second object which uh, constitutes the implicit renderer is the remarcher object, which basically decides on the algorithm which is used in order to convert the individual colors and the occupancies into the given uh, pixel color. Then we basically define the implicit surface function. Uh, in this case, this is called f, and this typically would be just a PyTorch module because we want from this uh, function to be basically differentiable and we want uh, to be also able to uh, uh, issue forward passes to, it, passes to it and store some parameters. So this is a typical case for usage of a torch uh, module. Once we have the implicit function defined, uh, we can then run forward passes through the renderer. Um, so the forward pass of the renderer would take the actual implicit function, which is really just a pointer to the function. And then because we want to render uh, the implicit surface from a given viewpoint, it would also take the parameterization of the camera from which we want to emit the rendering rays. And so then basically the result of the forward pass is the final rendered image. Um, so for PyTorch 3D, we have implemented a bunch of ray samplers. Uh, the most basic one is the uh, NDC grid ray sampler, which basically samples the individual rays on uh, the image pixel grid. And this is basically suitable for just like rendering full uh, images. The second ray sampler, which we have implemented is called the Monte Carlo ray sampler. And this one basically is suitable for architectures which are very uh, memory heavy. Uh, and this is because the Monte Carlo grid sampler basically selects individual 2D locations in the image pixel grid by random and then emits the rays from those. So it only renders a subset of the image. Now, having described the ray sampling, we will now describe the ray marching. So on this slide specifically, we explain one of the standard uh, uh, ray marchers, which is turned the emission absorption ray marcher. And on top of the slide, you can see how we can initialize this object. And as mentioned on the previous slides, before running the ray marcher, we can execute the ray sampler in order to generate a bunch of 3D points in the scene. Now, these points are later labeled with the occupancies and colors, as we've said before. And given this, the emission absorption ray marcher basically defines the rendered color as a weighted sum of the individual per, per, per point colors. And so we illustrate how these individual depths are generated on the following plot. So we can first plot the uh, occupancy function uh, along the ray. And uh, since the ray intersects the apple in two different places, the occupancy function would have two peaks, as we can see here on the graph. Uh, we can then plot the transmission function, which basically expresses the probability that a ray does not terminate at a given point x. And so this basically corresponds to a cumulative product of the complement of the uh, occupancy probabilities. Then the product of the transmission function and of the occupancy function gives us this uh, kind of weighting function, which we use in order to uh, render the actual colors. And what you can see here is that the weighting function actually um, peaks around the first intersection of the ray with the surface, which is uh, very convenient because that means that this will basically accumulate only the colors which are covering the actual um, surface which we want to render. Now, having described the main building blocks of the PyTorch 3D renderer, what we can now do is describe the main application of it. And to this end, we will describe a very simplified version of the popular neural radiance fields paper from uh, this year's DCCV. And so neural radiance fields basically follow the same implicit renderer design as I described in the previous slide. So uh, we have a ray sampler and a ray marcher, and then we basically uh, render individual points uh, which are uh, sampled along the, along the rays. However, there are quite a few key tricks which significantly improve the rendering performance. And so the first trick is basically to transform the raw 3D coordinates into a high dimensional representation, which is suitable for processing with uh, deep networks. This is called a positional embedding and consists of stacking the harmonic functions of the individual uh, points or point coordinates. The second trick is basically representing the occupancy and color functions with an MLP that has been already sort of described before. 
Next, uh, in order to allow uh, modeling of viewpoint dependent effects, the MLP tech actually takes as an input the uh, direction of a given ray of the given input uh, 3D point. And then finally, because uh, the rendering pipeline is uh, super memory heavy, uh, we only sample a random set of 2D locations in the image for which we ablate the photometric loss, which uh, finally supervises the whole training. And so the task would look as follows. We would have a bunch of uh, multi-V images of an object with uh, the corresponding camera poses. Uh, so in this case, we have a bunch of renders of a mesh of a cow from uh, a camera which is rotating around it. And as an output, what we would like to have is the neural radiance field, which is basically just uh, an implicit surface, which is colored and we can render it from any possible viewpoint. And so in what follows, I will basically uh, describe or go through the sets of a notebook that is, that is mentioned in the bottom of the slide and which is going to be released together with the rest of the implicit rendering components. Okay, so the first step of uh, the neural radiance field implementation in PyTorch 3D is uh, basically to define the implicit renderer. And in PyTorch 3D, this could be actually done in very few steps. So as mentioned before, NERF renders only a random subset of uh, image pixels and thus we uh, initialize a ray sampler object, uh, a Monte Carlo ray sampler. Uh, we then initialize the ray marcher. In this case, we follow the paper implementation. So we basically use just the emission absorption ray marcher. And then we create the render by passing these two uh, objects to the implicit render constructor and this generates the uh, renderer object. So this is very simple. In three lines of code, we have basically defined the renderer of an implicit function. In the second step, we uh, define our neural radiance field. And um, as we can see here, uh, the neural radiance field is basically inheriting from a torch module, because what we want from the neural radiance field is that, it, uh, that we can issue backward passes to it and that it, that it can also take care of the parameters which we would like to optimize in order to improve uh, the lindable colors and opacities generated by the uh, radiance field. We then define the trunk of the neural radiance field, which is basically just a simple multilayer perceptron. We then follow with the occupancy layer, uh, which takes the input uh, or the output of the uh, MLP and maps uh, these individual features into scalar occupancy value between 0 and 1 as the opacity should. Finally, uh, the color layer is a secondary branch of the neural radi radiance field model and converts the features to three tuples of RGB ray point values. And so once we are done with uh, defining the constructor of NERF, uh, we can describe the forward pass. And uh, what the forward pass does is that it's responsible for taking the ray points. In this case, the ray points are described with a data structure called ray bundle. Um, it takes this ray bundle and converts the bundle into a bunch of points in the word coordinates. These word coordinates and are then passed through a harmonic embedding, which then enters the MLP in order to generate a bunch of features uh, for each of those ray points. And then the features enter the density layer in order to label each of those points uh, with the densities and we further label the points with uh, colors using the color layer. And observe here that the color layer also takes as an input uh, together with the features also the ray directions taken from the ray bundle input. And then finally, uh, the interface of PyTorch 3D prescribes that the implicit function should return uh, densities and colors as a two tuple. But uh, this is not prescribed by heart. Uh, of course, the whole interface is very flexible and we can uh, change it in any way we want. And then finally, we run an uh, optimization loop which will fit the radiance field into our observations. So uh, in the first step, we generate the neural radiance field object by just like calling our uh, defined class. Uh, we initialize the optimizer object as a standard uh, Adam uh, optimizer. And then we start doing the uh, main optimization iterations. Uh, in the first step, in each iteration, we uh, sample a random batch index. Um, we then uh, select uh, from the set of training cameras the corresponding subset. We zero the optimizer gradient, uh, random Monte Carlo renderer, 
uh, the Monte Carlo renderer here basically takes the object as we have uh, defined it and uh, the object takes as an input the arguments uh, which are the cameras and the uh, initialized neural radiance field model. This then generates a bunch of rendered pixels together with uh, the uh, sample rays. And then in order to, to compare the rendered pixels to something, we take the ground truth locations or like the ground truth images and then sample the ground truth images at the Monte Carlo locations defined by the ray bundle re uh, returned by the uh, Monte Carlo renderer. And so then basically the loss is just a simple uh, absolute uh, deviation between uh, the rendered pixels and the sampled ground truth values from the image. And then uh, later we do the uh, standard uh, PyTorch uh, construct. So we basically take the backward uh, or the call the backward pass on the generated loss. And then, but then we take the optimizer step. And so this is how the actual optimization looks like. Uh, here what we can see is the progression of the neural radiance field rendered from four fixed viewpoints as the optimization progresses or as the iterations increase. And we can see that at the end of the optimization, the results actually look quite satisfactory. And here we can see again uh, the final result, which is just rotating around the uh, implicit neural field. And so to reiterate here, uh, this is basically, this has been going through uh, a set of steps of an IPython notebook, which is going to be released with the rest of the, um, of, of the volumetric processing utilities. And so, so far I have only shown a very simplified version of NERF. Uh, and this example basically shows, shows what happens once we run a bigger model for a longer time for a single scene which basically contains an apple in the middle. So we can see that uh, this is able to generate uh, a bit higher level of quality. There are a few more results for an orange. Unfortunately, the orange is uh, touching the ground with one of its parts. So what we can see here is that uh, uh, the lower part of the orange actually contains this kind of uh, undefined region where the light passes through. And then finally, uh, another scene or like running a result of running nerf on another scene uh, with a sandwich in the middle. Again, we can see that uh, uh, the side which is touching the surface is actually uh, badly defined and generates this kind of uh, artifact. Okay, so after we have described uh, some of the tools for rendering implicit uh, surfaces, here we will describe some tools for processing voxel grids in PyTorch 3D. So an important thing to realize here is that a voxel grid is in, is in fact a special kind of an implicit surface where the, the domain is restricted to a 3D rectangular grid. So formally the occupancy function at point X is just a query into the correct location in the occupancy volume O. So here the query point is denoted as eta x, where eta basically expresses the transform from the word coordinates to the local coordinates of the volume. And similarly, the coloring function also corresponds to querying a big color volume called C with the points eta x. Now PyTorch 3D implements a data structure called volumes, which basically simplifies handling some of these volumetric operations. So here we show how we can initialize a volumes object by passing in a 5D tensor of densities and features. And uh, similar to point clouds and meshes structures, uh, this kind of volume structure can actually uh, handle volumes of heterogeneous batch sizes. In terms of rendering of the volume, this is actually quite similar to the implicit rendering. Um, so the renderer again takes a camera and an image pixel, emits a ray and uh, samples a bunch of points along uh, the ray. Now, uh, importantly, when we are evaluating the occupancy and coloring functions, these are not just generic functions, but they are basically querying the color or occupancy grids using the, uh, the specific uh, sampling functions which we have implemented. Now, once we have obtained the occupancies and colors, we can then execute again ray marching, which generates a pixel for a given ray. And the implementation will look as follows. So the volume renderer is uh, a class on itself in PyTorch 3D. 
and uh, it contains the array sampler object which again takes care of the uh, sampling of the individual uh, rays and points along them and an array marcher again the same as an implicit uh, function rendering the big difference comes now where instead of having the implicit function we actually have an object of the volumes class which then enters the volumetric renderer and then of course uh, the volumetric renderer has to know from which viewpoint we are rendering the scene so it also takes the camera as an input okay so again uh, what we can do with the volumetric rendering is uh, optimize it by observing a bunch of multi-view images of a scene and this is what we are doing here on the same data is the, the implicit function rendering um, what we can see here is that the output of this notebook which is again going to be shared in pytorch 3d is uh, this nice colored volume with some of the you know, Minecraft like ar artifacts which typically come with volumetric representations and so I will not go into the details of the implementation I will just show how the optimization looks like what is important to note here is that volumes typically converge much faster than the neural implicit fields mostly because uh, they are not represented with deep networks Uh, one more important operator which we have impro impl uh, implemented for uh, volumes is a conversion of point clouds into the volumetric grids uh, and so here we have implemented a conversion which either trilinearly splits points on the volumetric grid or just rounds them to the volumetric grid a nice application is related to uh, unprojecting or converting tracked rgbd views uh, into a common volume of the scene so here we have taken uh, a bunch of frames capturing a chair together with the depth uh, we then unproject these individual points convert them into point clouds and um, using this operator which um, converts a point cloud to a volume we generate a nice volume of the scene the volume looks as follows uh, we can see in the middle that uh, there is definitely a chair being represented as a bunch of boxes.